today's topic is going to be just a teensy bit morbid, but isn't that just the way of things? I promise I'll tell you a joke at the end of the chapter, just to spice things up. Not that I need to make this worth your while, surviving is its own reward. So what are we talking about? Well, you can probably tell from the title of this chapter, silly buns. We're talking about diseases and illnesses. When I was a filly, when we got sick, we would just go to the doctor and maybe get the day off school. Now, not only are there no schools, but there are very few doctors. Which means that if you get sick, you're gonna have to handle it the best that you can. Let's start with our first and most common disease, influenza often just called the flu. It is a super highly and contagious disease and it can seemingly come out of nowhere. It may leave you in a severely weakened condition. You can recognize it by the signs of coughing and sneezing, a fever and loss of appetite. That last one was trickier to tell when I was young because sometimes a pony just doesn't feel like eating because their stomach was full. Now, well, Without as much food to go around, everyone's just as hungry as a ghoul. Well, just as hungry as a feral ghoul. Not a harmless sweetie pie kind ghoul like Ditsy. Anyway, the easiest way to treat a pony with the flu is bed rest and warmth. Get them under a blanket or near a fire. Avoid exposure to the elements and avoid strenuous activities. The consequences of failing to do so could be severe, as it could lead to far worse illnesses. Next up, we have tetanus, also known as lockjaw. This is another common one, but it's still fairly nasty. We actually used to have fairly effective vaccinations for this when I was younger. We still do. They're just not as common, and they're not permanent. You have to get a new one every four to five years. You might be able to find a doctor with a tetanus vaccination if you travel to one of the major settlements. Ten Pony Tower or Friendship City might have one if you're very lucky. I've heard rumors that Steel Ranger Outposts in Trottingham might also have similar medical supplies, but you'll have to take that with a grain of salt. They're historically not the biggest fans of ghouls, as Trottingham used to be a feral controlled city, so I haven't been able to get close. So, how might one contract tetanus if one is especially unlucky? Typically from rusted metal or animal bites. You see, this might be one of the more contagious diseases? Biting animals and rusty metal might as well be an alternate name for our wonderful wasteland. I'm sorry, that felt a little mean. If you contract tetanus, you'll know because of a high fever, difficulty with sudden movement, and muscle spasms. If you've been injured on a piece of rusted metal, or you've been bitten by something, it is incredibly important that you clean the wound with hot, salt water, or alcohol immediately. Without a vaccination, it's the only surefire way to prevent tetanus infection. If you're unable to clean the wound, or are unsuccessful, then you'll need to find a doctor as soon as you can. To ease the patient's discomfort, I'd recommend finding muscle relaxant medication. They sometimes look like tiny green pills. That will slow the muscle spasms until you can hopefully find medical assistance. Right. On to the next thing. Another thing with a disturbing name. This is Streptococcus equi, also known as strangles. It's a bacterial infection that appears in fillies and colts. Much like with flu, it presents as fever, sneezing, coughing, and loss of appetite, but it also comes with difficulty swallowing and breathing. It's most commonly contracted by infection via the sneezes of other ponies or through the contaminated and dirty utensils, like feeding buckets or bowls and such. This is why it's very important to clean anything you share with other ponies before you let them put it in their mouths. It's best treated with a vaccine, though these are far more rare than the ones for tetanus or with an antibiotic like or containing penicillin. These are more common than vaccines in the wasteland and most doctors and towns will have antibiotics in stock. The difficult with these come with cost, but I assure you they are well worth the money. Finally, I'm going to talk about the fourth most common disease I've seen, and it's probably the nastiest one because there isn't really a cure for it. 
It's called encephalomyelitis, also known as a sleeping sickness. The sleeping sickness attacks the brain, causing temporary blindness and bursts of excitability. It kills more ponies than almost any other virus. Now, some ponies may have immune systems strong enough to fend off the infection, but even then, there is permanent damage to your brain and your eyesight. This was something that there was a vaccine for, but these have fallen out of use these days. If something is developed or discovered, I'll be sure to spread the word as far and as wide as possible. But, since there is no cure at the moment, we're going to focus on preventative measures. The virus is only transmitted through mosquitoes, and only through certain parts of Equestria. Mosquitoes that were affected by the balefire radiation have evolved in such a way where they no longer carry the virus. So, this is a weird thing to say, but regions with a history of radiation, even low levels, are almost completely free of sleeping sickness. Otherwise, you can go to a general store in your town where ponies may have chemicals, smelling salts, or even big nets which can be hung over your bed to prevent non-irradiated mosquitoes from getting you as you sleep. Now, if you're the type of pony who travels or adventures from place to place, maybe you're relocating or you're in a caravan or have some kind of righteous crusade, I cannot recommend enough the importance of preparing for illnesses. When you find a caravan or a town with a doctor or any kind of medication, please go take a look and see what they have to offer. Stock up on your supplies. My primary recommendation are muscle relaxants, cough syrup, and antibiotics, particularly penicillin. And one more thing, the reason that vaccinations and some of these other medications exist in Equestria at all can be traced back to the Health Alliance. Their name isn't actually an acronym, that's just how they like it spelled. They're a body of doctors, surgeons, and mercenaries who travel the wasteland and search the ruins of the old world hoping to uncover the secrets to pre-war medication. One of their doctors advised the writing of this script. However, their numbers are dwindling and their funding is running quite low. So if they pass through your town in their traveling caravan, I cannot beg you enough to donate caps, food supplies, and ammunition to their group. It's going to take all of us to keep them running. And I think we have it in us to do that.